I wasn't saying you slept with 28% of American men. I was using an algorithm. Editing Aaron Sorkin dialogue is like writing a tidal wave of brilliant dialogue. And as long as you're surfing along the top, it's rough. You're trying to publicly paint me as a slut and a whore. Believe me, I'm not trying to publicly do anything with you. But if you fall off and that rhythm breaks and you lose the audience for whatever reason, it's almost impossible to get it back on another wave. I applied for welfare yesterday. The Time article said your Apple stock was worth $441 million. And I wanted to ask you how you felt about that. Well, I feel like Apple stock has been dramatically undervalued. This would be a good time to get in. Tim Gray here for Artisans. Steve Jobs brings together one of the best dialogue writers in Hollywood, Aaron Sorkin, with master visual stylist Danny Boyle. But that proved a challenge for our guest this week, editor Elliot Graham, who had to ensure the long dialogue scenes had the same energy on screen that they had on the page. Now, the way Aaron Sorkin writes, I yeah. mean, his, he has rhythms that are so he does. distinct. Yes. Does, does that help you, or does that uh, flummox you as an editor? It does both, and it's wonderful. Um, seriously, it's a rush when you are writing that momentum that he creates, his motor, the Aaron Sorkin motor, but we need it to be able to intervene. It can outstay its welcome, you know, and become a three-hour film. It also can just outstay its welcome in being incessantly dialogue-driven for too long. What Danny wanted to do was find ways to elevate it visually and to give us visual uh, interventions that would allow us to either speed up the Aaron Sorkin dialogue or slow it down if you need a little bit of a breather or give you a visual component rather than just watching the um, brilliant actors talk for two hours. It was always a very delicate balance to serve the nuances of the actors' performances and serve the momentum you needed to get through the film without outstaying your welcome. Mm -hmm. I get a free pass for life up. from you. You give out the pass, you give them to me. You're gonna have a stroke, little buddy. What did you do? What did you do? It felt like a series of fight sequences, really, like an action film when I read the script. It was always actors just going at each other, brilliantly so. So one thing you were doing with the sequences was trying to capture that kinetic energy of a fight. Fix it. What the? Fix it, Steve. Take it easy. Fix it, or I quit. How about that? I quit and you never see me again. How about that? But two, to still capture the little minor nuances that people like Kate Winslet and Michael Fassbender bring to you with just the, you know, wrinkle of the corner of an eye. How do you maintain the subtlety of that that they bring and still serve the energy of the Sirkinian language and, and the Danny Boyle visuals? I love that you don't care how much money a person makes. You care what they make. But what you make isn't supposed to be the best part of you. When you're a father, that's what's supposed to be the best part of you. When Variety, Justin Chang reviewed the film, he said the film blows away traditional storytelling conventions. Was I intentionally exploding conventions? No. <laughs> I think Aaron, originally, I mean, he's the one who said, I'm gonna write a three-act structure, not a normal three-act structure, three distinct behind the scenes of product launches, uh, three stories. It was our job, Danny's and mine, and everyone else's to come in and serve that three-act structure, which is inherently unique, and maybe that's what you know Justin was talking about, but also serve the pitfalls that come with that structure. And the pitfalls are <laughs> that you're starting and ending repeatedly, and every ending is a chance to lose the audience. Don't let the momentum end just because you're starting a new story. And that was something that we particularly had to pay attention to in editorial. So we actually excised the, half the material from those first scenes of Act 2 and 3, so that when you're dropped out of this interstitial, you drop right into a fast-moving train. Now, you might have to do a little catching up along the way, but our thought was that that's a lesser evil than having to stop and restart when momentum is so significant in this Aaron Sorkin you know, motor. So. In some ways, that's what's different than other movies, but it's also a really exciting ride. Two most significant events of the 20th century. The Allies win the war, and this. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Jobs.